Stop adding bells and whistles and focus on stability. New features are worthless without a foundation to build it on. I don't want new things, I want no crashes. I'm going to address this new update, but first let me tell you this. A few months ago, Adobe invited a few of us over to their offices in San Francisco to allow us to air out our grievances regarding what we want fixed in Premiere Pro. We spent 24 hours just asking question upon question, literally complaining about everything. On behalf of Adobe, there was no excuse making. They didn't beg us to make and post positive content about Adobe on our social media channels. They literally just listened. For the great majority of the 10 years that I've been using Adobe Creative Software, I've never felt that Adobe has been necessarily that interested in getting grassroot, on the ground feedback from its users. That's just been my perception. I don't know if that's actually true. But maybe around the last two years, admittedly after DaVinci Resolve has kind of come in and disrupted the market, it's been literally night and day with Adobe. If I've learned anything about Adobe after this trip, it's been this. Number one, Adobe sees more things than you think. And this is actually a very good thing. They see all of your comments and your constant flaming of Premiere, or for you asking for stability over new features. They see it all. Number two, I learned that Adobe is not stupid. They know that unless they fix this problem completely, they're gonna to continue to lose market share and potentially lose a lot of revenue. And number three, they really want to fix the problem as far as stability and performance is concerned. They wanna invest in Premiere long-term and they have some major, pretty cool plans as far as 2023 goes. Does Adobe care about me? Does Adobe care about you? I've had so many people asking that questions and almost complaining in the comments of a lot of my past videos, fleshing out grievances that many of us probably have, including me, regarding their Premiere Pro nightmares of the past and maybe present. I have said this before, that is the wrong question to ask. It's because Adobe is not one entity. They are a massive company of literally thousands of employees and hundreds of decision makers with probably different levels of caring which I've always felt is kind of like an idealistic word to use in regard to a massive company. I feel like the beautiful reality that you and me should wrap our heart around is the fact that thank God they still wanna make money. And without a product that people actually wanna use, they're not gonna make money. I don't really care if Adobe cares about me or if Adobe cares about you. I want Adobe to continue to want to make money and understand how that's within their own self-interest. And a quality Adobe product is in my self-interest as well because it allows me to continue making money through my post-production company and through my freelance work. And just a side note, everyone at Adobe that I met anyway actually genuinely seem to care a lot about all of you creatives out there for what that's worth to you. They are actually real humans with real families that take a lot of pride in their work. So in regard in regard to the latest update of Premiere Pro, in my opinion, this is real proof that Adobe is listening. Number one, the latest update of Premiere is the most stable, the most reliable, and the fastest version of Premiere Pro in the history of the software. How many times in forums and YouTube comments have you been hearing, stop adding bells and whistles to Premiere and just focus on stability. They've heard you and they've heard me and times are finally changing, hopefully. Good news, crash rates have evidently been cut in half and entire software freezes where you get that annoying spinning wheel of death is finally on its way out. We're gonna have to see regarding that, but that's what they're telling us. What I'm trying to say is all of you guys that are normally scared of updating Premiere Pro because of potential novel update bugs, this is the update that you want to take advantage of. Number two, text-based editing is finally out of beta and right in normal Premiere Pro. Similar to the script, this allows you to edit your video clips literally like a Word document via editing the actual transcript of the video. Number three, and this one freaked me out, Mogarts as well as regular titles are two times faster. Now hold up a second. Remember how excited I was when they made Mogarts two times faster like a couple updates ago? Remember how I said how much it completely changed the way that our company made digital products? Because people could now use Mogarts without first praying to God that they would play through smoothly? Well guess what? Mogarts are now two times faster than the last time they were made two times faster. This is crazy good for you as a creative and incredibly good for us as an ambitious digital product creator business. We actually have this Mogart based digital product called ePRISM that basically gives you a digital version of these lens distortion filters that you usually see in music video sets right inside Premiere Pro. We have both volume one with 10 gorgeously subtle effects and volume two with 10 more crazy subtle, absolutely beautiful effects. Check them out in the link below. Every purchase literally helps us keep the lights on here in the office. Let's move on to number four, automatic tone mapping. Tone mapping allows you to work with say HDR iPhone footage and 10-bit log footage on the same timeline. I literally stopped editing iPhone footage in Premiere because I could never get it to look good in Premiere. It always looked perfect on my iPhone, 
but then it looked crazy blown out in Premiere. Tone mapping converts the media color space so that it looks normal in a standard timeline. Finally, right, this is actually really good news. Number five, we finally have background auto saving. This will not only save changes to the current project file, which it didn't before, it will continue to make backups without interrupting your work. Finally, you're not gonna have any more auto saving loading bars interrupting your editing sessions. Number six, they're offering some support to a few more formats, Red V Raptor XL, Ari Alexa 35, and Sony Venice V2. And number seven, this is another good one. Premiere Pro now uses ProRes by default for improved preview video file performance. And check this out, the fact that they're using such a high quality preview file format in ProRes also allows you to check use previews on export to enable way faster exporting without concern for degrading the final quality of your final export due to the low quality preview files of before. And for number eight, titles in the timeline can now be bulk edited. And for number nine, captions can now be turned into graphics so that you can add effects and animations. For example, I used the text animation presets in Dave's social media creator kit to add these dope animations to these newly created captions. For number 10, Premiere remembers the last used export preset on output. This could definitely save a few seconds of time at the very end of your project. And lastly, you can now send exports directly to Media Encoder, just like you can in After Effects for background exporting. And that's it.